Hey everybody, it is the like the second day of August or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm sure this video will come out later than that, but I am very happy to have a nice shady work site back here in the woods today. It's in a beautiful location here. We're just on somebody's private land. We're trying to take out some trees. Well, we are taking out some trees. We're gonna do more than try uh, to protect this pavilion. Uh, we had some big windstorms early this spring here in Ohio and a tree came down and hit this pavilion and just messed it all up and so the homeowner is looking to or i should say the landowner is looking to prevent uh something like that from happening again so we're going to be taking down this tree and doing a little bit of trimming on this tree this is a hickory and uh this one's a tulip tree but the thing that's got us concerned about this one is the base decay here it's got a bad spot and so we're just going to go up there we're going to climb we're going to be able to free fall some of it and we're going to have to rig some of it. Um, some of it leans out over the pavilion here and so it's hard to free fall stuff. You know, it probably could be free falled, but it can probably be done bigger and faster uh, with a rope. So that's the approach we're going to take. We also got to be careful not to tear up these other trees around here. You know, this is a, a nice area and uh, they hold parties and stuff back here. We don't want to make it look like a tornado came through. So. I got my climbing rope way up high on this side. We're gonna climb up there. We're gonna set a redirect here, maybe a main block here, probably rig this side down, and then hopefully free fall parts off of this side. So. That's the plan. As you well know, the plan is very subject to change as things go on, as we get up there and see different perspectives. But uh, you know, it's nice to start out with at least something to work with, you know, as far as the plan goes. So I'm gonna get my harness on and I'm gonna jump up in that tree and we'll get started. So I'm working my way up the tree here and I've come to the first big union and it has got some evidence of some nasty bark inclusion. You got, I mean, these are two, two pretty substantial leads. I mean, they go a long ways up still. So I'm glad, to, glad that we're taking this down. I mean, it's kind of, kind of a risky tree. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take this limb off of this tulip tree like I pointed out in the beginning. The reason we're gonna do that first is because it's just gonna open up some space for us to swing stuff to. You know, our rigging block is way up there and all those branches gotta swing down through here and just be a lot easier if this branch is in here. It's coming off anyway, so we're just gonna get it out of our way. That's the white eye that we just trimmed off down there. That was the branch. It occupied that space. I'm hoping we can save a couple of these other branches on this tulip tree. It's not the end of the world if they go, but we would like to keep as much else of that tree as, as we can. So we're going to go ahead and send uh, these two as a pair down through there. It should, should go pretty good, except that it's a little bit wide and it's got to fit through a small space. So that tree is a hickory. It can take the brush no problem. Tulip tree is a little more fragile. Okay, here we go. I could, could let that run a little bit more. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over and rig that out, that whole thing over there. I'm not sure, I don't wanna do it whole. This tree could probably take it, but there's enough squiggles in this bar that we're rigging from and enough sap sucker damage and a void down there. We're just not gonna push it. But anyhow, we'll take it in a couple pieces probably. But I was really, originally from the ground, I was hoping to just bomb this out. Maybe even like, a, a slash cut or something and let it come down through the other trees but there's just so much other brush and I don't want to tear it up and it's only going to take what a few more minutes to rig it out so that's what we're going to do we'll just do a tip tie let it swing over here and then it should lower pretty easy more than making this like a traditional tip tie I think we're just going to swing it over I think that's what we're going to do I mean that's kind of what it's going to gonna, gonna do anyway <laughs> It's just a matter of whether or not we planned on it. <laughs> I'm 
I'm gonna hinge it towards the pavilion. The rope is gonna help support it as it takes that path. And then it'll also load the, lo ro <laughs> load the rope, not road the lope. It'll load the rope fairly gently and it won't be a single shock you know, event. It'll swing into it nice. I don't believe I'll be under threat of this thing because as it comes around, it'll hit the main stem over there and kick the butt that way if anything. And uh, we should be good to go. Also, it's hickory and it's gonna hold on pretty much no matter what. I wouldn't be surprised if the butt is still on here once the piece settles on the rope. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And run. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, I should have made some sapwood cuts on that hinge. That was less than beautiful. We did lose a little branch in a tulip tree. That's okay, I'll go down there and trim that up before we're done. Then this piece will just tie right here and we'll do that like an actual tip tie. That'll be pretty. Actually, will we? I don't like tip ties like that because when they come off, especially when the rigging point is above you, they kind of can come back and get you. You can't let them run past you. They're not great. We'll see what we do, we'll see. Well, Goofy Me forgot that I'm working in the woods and I can send this right down there without having to worry about tearing up the yard, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now's a good time to go over there and get that branch while we're at the same elevation here. Easy peasy. Alrighty, so all that stuff over there over that tulip tree is dealt with. We've got this top and this top to rig out yet, I think. And then I think everything on that side I can free fall because there's not, not much that we're trying to save. You know, it's very big open space and I think it'll go pretty well. So then all the wood from that I can obviously free fall as well because we're not very close to the pavilion. But uh, we're going to go ahead and send this top out. I'm going to remember my sapwood cuts so I don't put myself in danger. And uh, the only challenge with this top is kind of... It's not really locked in up there with limbs, but it's it's definitely going to have to brush and probably roll out a little bit. So we're going to try and send it right past the side of this tree. That tree can handle it. It's not going to be a problem, uh, but it's probably not going to be a perfectly smooth, beautiful swing kind of a thing either. <laughs> It came out of there. This wasn't as smooth and pretty as we would have liked it. Now what we'll do after this will be a real tip tie, since I kind of stood you up on the first one. Um, we'll tie it here, and because this is closer to the rigging point than where I'll be cutting, this limb will swing out nice. It will have the chance to swing back and come kind of close to me, uh, especially with it being a double pendulum. But uh, I think that's a risk I'm willing to take. It won't come back super hard, and I can duck onto the other side of the stem there and avoid getting kissed by it. All right, it works tied on up there with extra half hitch since this is smooth bark and there's not a lot for it to grip, just a few twigs. And now we're gonna go ahead and cut it right here. I'm gonna just cut it at an angle so that way it can whoop, fall away from us. I could put a notch in it, but I'd just be left cutting the hinge off too. So my flip line right here, just that way in case it does wanna peel out the other side, I'm not in danger of getting stuck in that mess.
did a little jerky jerky. It did peel nice and that actually worked to our advantage because we were able to kind of gently let the tip into the rope and then just the butt when it slid off whipped over there. Alrighty boys and girls, we're up here in this top. This is the last thing we got to rig out of this tree. I think, you know, could that could change, but it's the last thing we got to rig as far as I know now. So I'm going to go ahead and notch it and I'll tie the rope on and then I'll back cut it. It doesn't matter where I tie the rope on, the distance that produces the amount of fall this negative rig is going to have is going to be between the cut and the axle on the block. And so it's it's a little bit farther than I'd like, but it's okay. This is already pre-loaded and pre-stretched and everything, so it's not going to have much more give to it. And uh, it'll be just fine. So. <laughs> Cut looks pretty good. Let's pull our rope up. Ooh. I never needed to use this rope on this tree. I, when I was on the ground, I was like, wow, this is tall. We'll be able to take big pieces, that kind of thing. And there's a, a single rig we've made that couldn't have been done with a half inch rope. Makes things go a little bit slower. It's heavier. It's gonna have different friction on the porter wrap, all that kind of stuff. Nice work. All right, all we got left is the wood on this bar, so we'll probably edit this into a uh, a ground pounding montage. <laughs> Now it's back up to the top to drop some more bombs. So we're back up here now and we got ourselves tied in and we're gonna cut this limb out. These are our last two tops here. This one I'm gonna take whole, and then this one I'm debating on what I'm gonna do with it. I kinda wanna take it whole, and I wanna take it back here at this union because that gives it pretty positive forward weight, you know, down that direction, that hole. Um, part of me wants to just be a little more conservative and take it in two smaller pieces because there are two pieces there with a big union right there. Uh, however, this one leans back a little bit, and without the weight of that one helping pull it over, I'm not sure it'll go real easy. That didn't go to plan at all. That was muy no bueno. That was due to bad cuts. That was not, <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't think it would have actually reached the pavilion, but that branch over there definitely helped keep it coming this way. For a minute there, I thought it was, I thought we were buying a new roof again. Not, not again, I've never had to buy a roof, but this roof was just bought recently, so. Anyhow, that was rather embarrassing. Maybe I should have just stuck with some simple top and bottom cuts. It doesn't take much. These little fibers are just what held this up here. It took until these fibers slid all the way out of that piece of wood down there for this to drop off of here. And the goal was that this would drop off fast. Maybe it was just too big of a piece to try and spear cut with the size of saw I had. We're gonna do this side different, not because of the way this went, but because we have a different strategy. <laughs>
this here is how I like to work down my spars. This is a, a rescue line, or at least when it's over a crotch, somebody could have sent on this to rescue me, so it goes all the way to the ground. This half of the rope is a rope I climb on, and it's, you know, got 15, 20, 30 feet on the ground, depending on how much I expect to need to redirect throughout the tree. And then as I work my way down the spar, I can just, you know, descend like I would normally. And then whenever I get to wherever I want to make a cut, it's really simple to just grab this because it's always not too far away, unless your spar is really leaning or something. You just give it a tug and it comes right down to you and you take up your slack and there you go. And it's the same way that I climb all day. I haven't, haven't changed anything up because I climb with this rescue side set up over a union somewhere all day. And so all I got to do is I cut those tops out and I spread out to go over the spar and then just start working my way down. All right, we're not worried about lawn damage, as is obvious. Uh, so we're going to be taking some bigger pieces out of here and not caring too much about how they hit, as long as they don't hit that tree or any other trees. <laughs> We're going to just go ahead, zip down to the bottom, and tip the rest of it over, whoop, right there. The customer wants a high stump left so he can still stack firewood in here, so we're going to cut it right in here. It's got enough natural lean that direction, we're going to have no, no problem sending it right down into there. <laughs> I made some good noises. Oh look, there's a big old grub crawling right up out of the hinge wood. Tasty. I know some tree guys that would probably eat that. Not me. Well, that pretty much wraps up this tree. I mean, it's on the ground, there's nothing more. Well, I guess we could cut it up, but that's not part of the deal for this one. So it actually would be a disadvantage because fellas gonna be cleaning up with an excavator, a mini excavator of sorts and sticking it in some other spot. And uh, the more small pieces there are, the longer it takes, so. We left everything in big pieces on the ground for him. It looks like quite a mess, but I'm sure he'll be able to sort through it pretty quickly. Left him his high stump over there. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty good tree, except for that that one branch up there in the top, that one limb that didn't come off real well. I'd say it was a pretty smooth operation. 
Uh, you know, every every opportunity that something doesn't go right is an opportunity to learn something. So it's never a waste. It certainly can be more costly than you want it to be. And, you know, that one didn't cost us anything. But it wasn't a waste. So I learned a valuable lesson. And uh, it all, all chalks up to experience, right? Not upset about how that went in the end. Just want to do better next time. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you supporting the channel. If you could push that like button, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you'd like to see more of this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.